uh, uh, good morning this is uh, the fourth lecture now uh, you know we we talked about of course uh, invention and uh, uh, innovation you know and i just thought i will show you something uh, which was uh, uh, maybe about uh, what about uh, maybe 6 to 7 years back they asked uh, uh, all the chemical engineers Uh, to uh, say what they considered to be the top ten uh, inventions of the modern uh, uh, era, you know, and I'm not very clear uh, what is meant by uh, modern era and uh, uh, when it begins. You know. And uh, uh, those people, you know, identified uh, these uh, uh, these things. Okay, <laughs> and it says that there were some which didn't. Uh, make it to the top 10 you know they've given uh, uh, some of that list okay now uh, i just i wanted to ask you um, what do you think of this list just whatever first impression comes to your mind don't have to be very very uh, uh, deep thinking in in this you know just so, first impression so like uh, uh, like for nowadays we can say that the battery is much more important Then, uh, okay. Let's okay. say for the ninth one instead of ninth the ninth one. one uh, okay. So what you're saying is the uh, 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 priorities need to priorities uh, uh, can change. Huh? Can change. Uh, e.g. Uh, uh, e.g. battery. Huh? Okay, that's what you're trying to say, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else that comes to your mind, sir? Uh, specifically, the uh, invention of the bullet trains or something of that sort, which is uh, new in transport. Like there, there were railways previously, but in oh, the modern yeah, era, it wasn't. Huh. Yeah. Uh, that's not uh, included. Uh, the focus should be on. Uh, 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 uh incremental or radical uh, uh radical uh, uh changes within uh, within each class of invention right i think that's what you're trying to say yes, okay. yes. Huh? Hmm. anything else so this seems like fundamental uh, list sort of Yeah, which is the best? Uh, fundamental list. I mean, you mean a very broad list? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can say uh, inventions are too broad and general. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you've said it very well. You know, um, and uh, I'm sure uh, each one of you will have. Uh, um, Uh, some uh, thoughts on it, you know. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, that that was pretty much what what was also going through uh, my own mind, you know. That what is this? I, I, I mean, uh, how can uh, these be inventions? They are broad classes of things, you know. So I'm I'm really not understanding uh, what what exactly these thirty six thousand members. uh what they did or what they just trying to be politically correct you know uh in trying to give things in a in a very broad uh, way you know so by contrast you know uh, i can show you uh, and which i have already sent to you okay uh, that uh, maybe about uh, 10 years back uh, there was a, a a very nice set of uh, uh, articles which were uh, published you know on uh, chemical engineers who changed the world okay and uh, uh, and you know they were uh, very specific okay uh, and uh, uh, i mean you may uh, still disagree uh, with some of the names etc it does give a uh, some kind of a feel and going uh, all the way from the uh, you know the 17th century uh, to uh, uh, to to the uh, 20th century okay and uh, that's that's pretty good i mean at least they've uh, tried to uh, do it you know 
and I'm not going to read out this list, you know, but you can see the first uh, 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 name well before actually a formal subject called chemical engineering was introduced, you know, well, well before that. Uh, the general feeling is that someone like uh, Glober, you know, of uh, Global Salt fame, and uh, you know, Glober did incredible things. I mean, if you look at, including the um, some of the early work which led to the uh, chamber process for sulfuric acid uh, manufacture, you know, he he was uh, a class apart. You know, so uh, putting him there uh, makes sense. You know. And then uh, they go to some of the big names, like the 18th century, if there is one name, uh, it is Leblanc, you know. And, uh, uh, and, and some of you, if not all of you, would have uh, 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 listened to my lecture on, on Leblanc. Uh, and uh, no doubt about it, you know, this, this is really what uh, uh, stood out in terms of uh, uh, being the greatest invention that set things along the line of more structured uh, manufacturing you know and with brilliance you know uh, of who nobody would have thought that you can convert sodium chloride uh, into sodium carbonate you know? we are talking about way before uh, the solve process okay and then uh, these people uh, is considered as pre age uh, chemical engineering these are the people who were working on sugar one of the biggest things, these were the two big things, salt and sugar, you know, and uh, this evaporating uh, uh, sugar syrup, you know, sugar cane juice, uh, people realized, you know, that uh, uh, it was, it was something firstly that was done by slaves, you know, and a uh, lot of slaves used to die, you know, during this uh, whole process. And, uh, and secondly, uh, the, these people actually were the first to recognize the amount of energy that is consumed, you know, uh, in evaporating uh, the juice to to get sugar, and also that uh, as the temperatures become too high, uh, there is a tendency for caramelization, you know. And these are the people who, for the first time, uh, introduced uh, vacuum evaporation, uh, the multiple effect uh, still, you know, which uh, uh, basically takes advantage of the uh, of the latent heat that is released uh, when a vapor condenses and then to again reuse it and you know the radical change in terms of the amount of energy uh, that was required uh, for doing the evaporation you know so these were incredible uh, uh, people and also a very interesting combination that one of them actually came from a, a background of slaves and the other was uh, royalty you know nobility and uh, then you've got, uh, of course, uh, Besmer, the steel man. And, uh, you know, so it just goes on and on. You know, the, uh, the Charles and uh, Paul Herold, uh, uh, amazing, you know, the, the, what happened with uh, aluminium, uh, Linde, uh, with uh, liquefaction of air, uh, the person who first, for the first time formally introduced chemical engineering, uh, George Davis. Then you've got Bosch, you know, then you've got uh, Bingham, you know, and it goes on. Okay? Uh, Bakeland, uh, Arthur D. Little, uh, Midgley. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of this, you know. It's listed out here. Okay? And uh, there are about 40 uh, of these uh, exceptionally great uh, uh, people, including one or two that you have uh, uh, read about or uh, I might have spoken about before, like Trevor Kletz. Uh, the person who introduced uh, inherent safety, you know, I mean that completely transformed uh, manufacture, uh, the concept of uh, inherent safety, and his uh, uh, famous paper that what you don't have uh, can't leak, right? Okay. Uh, and it goes on, you know, uh, the people who uh, uh, really introduced the alkaline battery, okay, uh, uh, the person who introduced uh, liquid chromatography. Uh, it's so important and today liquid chromatography is actually used in manufacture is no longer just an analytical tool okay? uh, you know the lcd screen uh, arthur fry the people who introduced post it pad uh, the people who introduced expanded uh, 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 ptfe uh, you know and it goes on and on okay?
Nishi, who they are the ones who first popularized uh, the lithium ion battery, uh, the person who made the PET bottle. You know, all our bottles today, all this uh, water and coke and everything is all PET bottles. Now, what I want you to do now, then, uh, 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 you know, uh, in our first lecture, uh, I had asked you all uh, that what do you see as uh, uh, some of the big challenges? You know? And I thought, I, I, I again uh, copied this from our first lecture, you know, this slide. Okay. I put some thoughts of my own over here, but this is uh, what you all, you know, as students uh, uh, mentioned. Okay. Uh, and, and really very good ideas, you know, all of them. Okay. But what I want you to do uh, is that uh, I want you to take about uh, uh, two hours altogether and I want you to work in pairs. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, two people uh, per, per idea. Uh, if it is a very rigorous, uh, much more uh, uh, broader kind of an area, uh, maybe three people can join together. There's no uh, problem, you know. Now, what I want you to do uh, is that uh, I want you to think a bit more uh, deeply uh, about what you said. Some of them could be actually in the domain of being uh, uh, relatively easier to uh, execute. You know? uh, it, it can be executed in uh, in no time, okay. And then there are some uh, which are profound ideas but which may actually require a longer time frame uh, for these things to actually see the light of uh, day. Okay. And uh, I mean, in case you find any uh, uh, idea over here, you know, which uh, uh, appeals to you, please uh, uh, also uh, add that to the list you know, in case uh, you want to do that. I want you to think much more deeply okay, about what you said find out what has already been done. Okay. Uh, so uh, one uh, uh, slide should be about the broad idea and why it is important. Why is it important? Okay. And uh, how that idea came to you? Why did you think about that? Okay. And the second uh, should be what is already known about it? Or what has already been done okay. uh, in the world around it? So that will require some amount of uh, uh, reading up on your part, okay. And uh, the third will be what What do you think further needs to be done? What are the ideas? Okay. And is there any uh, uh, particular priority uh, of your ideas? You know, in 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 which you would like to uh, uh, some things which you'd like to emphasize uh, more over others. You know? So uh, I think no more than uh, three to four slides, okay. Uh, and whenever you are giving the uh, what has been done uh, also add the reference or the patent or whatever you know so that one knows that uh, uh, this is the prior art likewise what i want you to do uh, is that i want you uh, to also take um, about 12 uh, of these uh, chemical engineers who change the world okay now let me also tell you that uh, uh, you, you know some of them are actually not chemical engineers uh, they, uh, they, in the strictest sense, that they have not had a formal education in chemical engineering, you know. but they have been branded as uh, chemical engineers because, uh, uh, you know, I think it was uh, such a integral part of uh, chemical technology. Uh, I'll uh, identify about uh, uh, twelve, you know, of these people, and again, you can uh, uh, pair up, you know, uh, for these twelve. Okay. And I've already shared with you the, uh, the, uh, the profile of these chemical engineers who change the world. But I don't want you to make the presentation only based on that. I want you to do a little more homework. And I want you to especially pick out, you know, uh, since this is a course on innovations in chemical technology, did you find the innovations? What were the innovations okay. uh, which, uh, uh, which seem so extraordinary? If you if you don't find any uh, specific invention, uh, uh, then of course uh, uh, you you should say that you know uh, they did very important work, uh, but we could not identify any specific uh, innovation. Although uh, that is unlikely, you know you'll certainly find uh, something extremely creative uh, that each of them uh, did. Right 
now i might add uh, uh, one or two uh, 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 additional things other than this chemical engineer to change the world uh, uh, you know one or two other names that come to me as uh, uh, people uh, perhaps uh, it will be worth for you to make a presentation on that you know uh, like for example henry moisan you know about whose uh, work i've uh, sent you an article you know and uh, so i mean uh, people like that who have made incredible uh, uh, contributions okay now uh, you know let me also show you uh, that uh, you know why i uh, and i'm so glad that you all pointed this out you know that uh, uh, that when they asked these chemical engineers uh, uh, what are the great things that were uh, done and uh, and you know they have given things which are so broad you know where is the invention in in that is too broad and it also spans you know it uh, some of these things like fertilizers have happened since the 19th century okay? so what fertilizer are we talking about and uh, so i mean those were the uh, the the things and i believe that uh, you know to be able to uh, really become inventive okay, i think you need to first and foremost identify an invention uh, with utmost clarity okay. uh, what, what is the invention what are we talking about okay. like take for example this list as there are two such lists i'll discuss with you now this is a competition which was held mind you in 1913 okay? and what they did was uh, they uh, threw open the competition to anyone and it was uh, conducted by the scientific american which you know is one of the most most uh, famous uh, uh, journals you know in the area of popularizing uh, uh, science uh, without really diluting the uh, the depth and and that lucidity with which they uh, can uh, uh, articulate you know uh, great ideas and great things you know these were these are great uh, uh, journals the journal of chemical education uh, and scientific american okay now so they had a competition and uh, uh, you know the person who uh, uh, won the first prize okay uh, he happened to work in the us patent office okay so obviously he had a, a good sense of uh, uh, what is an invention okay and uh, so it's very interesting uh, that uh, right at number 1 uh, he placed the uh, the electric furnace of henry moisan uh, and uh, uh, you know this is one of the reasons why i sent you uh, uh, the uh, the article on uh, henry moisan which was uh, uh, published in angewante me and uh, the reason for that is uh, uh, you know uh, as he says uh, the you know, electric furnace if you if you look at uh, what it did uh, to metallurgy you know the uh, whether it was uh, aluminium industry or steel industry the ability to reach extremely high temperatures which till then nobody had been able to reach and it completely threw through open uh, an entire new branch of work you know? and and one after the other you know inventions uh, came out of that you know that is the importance of the electric arc furnace the reason why i emphasize that is uh, i hope that some of you uh, will at least be in that space you know uh, where you say hey let me make a device you know let me make something which nobody has made before you know? and uh, some of you might say let me do a new study which nobody has done before that's perfectly all right okay but at least some of the uh, some of the people should say i want to make something you know a device or a equipment you know? something which nobody has uh, made before okay and uh, uh, and of course uh, you know henry moisan uh, being at number 1 and also the person who uh, uh, discovered uh, or for the first time made elemental fluorine you know and uh, you know th that's the importance and obviously you can see uh, that the first prize went into went to someone uh, in the area of uh, chemical science chemical engineering chemical technology whatever you want to call it yes okay? 
and then of course uh, uh, and mind you it had very clear focus that it had to be within the uh, 30 years uh, preceding that so it had to be uh, uh, by 1883 you know something which has been which has been commercially introduced okay it's not just a great idea uh, you know patented idea no you know it had to be actually uh, commercialized you know that's the kind of thing that they were uh, looking at okay and uh, you can see some of the other uh, uh, things in the list the steam turbines okay and uh, the gasoline powered uh, uh, automobile you know and especially uh, that uh, they give the credit to daimler you know of the uh, daimler benz uh, uh, company okay and uh, he made his uh, engine in 1889 you know and uh, i was uh, very very fortunate to actually uh, be asked to sit in that uh, original uh, uh, vehicle made by uh, daimler when i was uh, visiting stuttgart we were working with uh, mercedes and uh, uh, you know so I, I, i mean it's a great feeling you can see it looks like a rickshaw you know uh, but that is really the first uh, self propelled uh, uh, vehicle okay? that's the importance of uh, of this thing okay? uh, and then of course the moving picture something as big as the aeroplane okay wireless telegraphy which today is gone you know i mean uh, the greatest but today it doesn't exist okay and then you know very interesting the cyanide process okay and uh, 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 the whole business of uh, extracting uh, gold you know and because gold is really what was associated with trade you know in those days okay? even today you know the importance of uh, of gold uh, besides uh, jewelry i mean how how important gold is in in trade okay and uh, that you know one could make pure gold and and we'll find out that this cyanide process is again you know linked to this not unlinked uh, from this okay so you have got two out of those 10 which have got some commonality and which we'll discuss okay and uh, then of course uh, 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 tesla's uh, induction motor you know the linotype machine which is what uh, really uh, uh, took uh, you know printing uh, to a whole new uh, level you know and then the entire thing on electric welding you know and uh, once electric welding came you know then the way it, uh, all these plants etc uh, started getting built you know, uh, with uh, also much better strength of uh, of the structures you know it, it's it's amazing so so these are the uh, the 10 that were identified now interestingly uh, they also gave a second prize you know and the second prize uh, went to another person who i feel uh, uh, probably uh, was a little more uh, into the uh, the chemical uh, uh, technology and probably a little more practical uh the this person okay and again uh, it's probably likely that uh, this person was also a, a patent attorney now this is another thing to learn you know that uh, sometimes uh, the ideas are articulated and ideas are identified not necessarily by the scientists they are identified by the common public and maybe brilliant people among them like the people who are in the patent uh, business you know uh, these are the people who uh, whose ideas were found to uh, uh, be the most worthwhile you know i don't see a scientist there okay? so uh, uh, again this is something please uh, uh, do remember and you know what this person came up with uh, is a uh, some some things were of course similar like the aeroplane you know uh, that person also put it at number 5 this person also put it at number 5 okay but the first thing that this person did uh, was actually put the electrical fixation of atmospheric nitrogen mind you it is not the heber process okay and we will discuss that okay? so even though it is 1913 and uh, the heber process had already been uh, uh, 
uh, invented by then and uh, uh, you know it was uh, beginning to get popular but that's not the process that they're talking about okay and uh, it is the electrical fixation of atmospheric nitrogen on which uh, uh, one of you did your uh, uh, seminar paper you know and so uh, uh, we will uh, we will discuss that a little bit okay and uh, then of course uh, uh, you know i told you about uh, uh, the sugar you know and all the chemical engineering the pre chemical engineering uh, which actually came out uh, of uh, sugarcane juice to uh, uh, making sugar but these people who also taught you know how to actually uh, preserve sugar producing plants you know because otherwise it would all get spoiled so that was extremely important okay and uh, then high speed steel alloys you know this is the kind of thing when when they were doing things at extremely high speed you know and uh, uh, the kind of heat uh, that was being developed you know uh, and uh, uh, you know they had to build uh, make some special alloys you know to be able to cut things uh, at those very high speeds and the very high temperatures that were uh, created and then you've got uh, which will subsequently uh, maybe in one of the uh, uh, lectures uh, probably in february uh, we'll talk about the work of langmuir you know the tungsten filament lamp gone today you know uh, more or less okay uh, but one of the greatest okay the plane okay the steam turbine again you can see uh, the internal combustion engine it's like the uh, self propelled engine so there were three or four which are uh, common you know in both of those uh, the pneumatic tire that, that was a uh, it, it, it they say that you know it was as in, important uh, you know as the uh, for a locomotive having the track you know and uh, uh, so again wireless communication is uh, we have seen the telegraphy uh, related uh, uh, things and uh, uh, composing machines you know? uh, again so again printing right so so there were quite a few things which were common uh, to both uh, but then there were uh, uh, some which were uh, different 